Okay, good morning everyone. I'm Bong Ming Wang from Penn State University. Today I'm going to pitch the idea of lightweight ultra-thin microcell CPV for the space. So the space exploration is growing faster and faster. Every year there are hundreds of satellites and spacecraft launched into the launch. So here is what the most common state of practice sources used for the space solar power, solar power system, which is called carbon glass integrated cells. In short, CICs. So, with the, with the faster growing of the space exploration, the space solar, solar power system becomes more and more demanding, and it needs more advanced solar cell technologies. Can be summarized as low cost, high efficiency, low mass, no volume, and high specs power and a long lifetime. So, concentrating photovoltaic CPV can deliver the, can help to deliver the goal of low cost, high efficiency because CPV system use uh, cheap optics to focus the sunlight onto small area of photovoltaic materials to reduce the usage of the expensive semiconductor materials to reduce the cost. And the content, the geometry gain can be defined as the ratio between the area of the optics to the area of the receiver. The concentration ratio can be defined as the geometry gain times the optical efficiency of the whole system. The CPV was first used for space back to 20 years ago. Uh, to mitigate the efficiency loss for the low irradiance and the low thermal applications. Here are, two, here are two examples for the space CPVs. One is the stretch lens array, one is the flexible array, with about 2 to 10x concentration ratio. But these designs are limited by the cell size, so the optics are large, so it's heavyweight. And also, due to the design, they are sensitive to the de uh, thermal and the radiation degradation. In the last two years, under the $2.9 million uh, funding from RPE, we, we are able to demonstrate a plant microcell CPV. So the cell side to micro side, we are able to shrink the size of the optics to achieve the extreme, extremely low profile CP, plant CPV. So the micro cells are transfer printed onto the carrier wafer and then sandwiched in between our concentrator, which consists of a top reflective lens and a bottom reflective mirror. So with this design, we are able to achieve a, a 750x continuity ratio with 70 degrees accepted angles and uh, with an extremely low profile with only 15 millimeter thickness. And it was, it was able to break 30% efficiency with a whole day operation, which made it the, mo the widest accepted angle and the highest efficiency planar microcell CPV in the world so far. And we are also able to deliver a design of 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter array with 300x geometry gain and 90% uh, optical efficiency. So this program enables us to validate a lot of concepts and designs for the microcell CPV, including the optical designs, uh, optical coatings, uh, cells printing, optical and cell alignment tolerance, and also the man manufacturing tolerance, including the optics molding tolerance, and so on. So with this success adapted from this project, we designed a revolutionary ultra-thin microcell CPV for the space solar power system. <clears throat> in order to achieve an even lower profile, we use one set of optics instead of two. So between the choice of top reflex lens and bottom reflex mirror, with the mirror, we can achieve the same continuity ratio, but with much thinner and lighter optics materials. So the micro cells are transfer printed onto the carbon glass and then bonded onto the bottom mirror with PDMS. So the whole thickness of the system is around 500 microns, um, which is comparable to the current CIC systems. So here, next I'm going to give some compelling reasons to why the industry should be interested in and invest in this technology. So first of all, with our design, we can achieve high efficiency and light weight. So we basically we have the ability to design the different uh, geometry gains. With, but with higher geometry gain, it requires more optical materials. And, uh, on the contrary, for the lower geometry gain, the PV cell shading becomes more significant, so uh, they will both compromise the specific power. So at, with the 32x geometry gain, we can achieve the optimal specific power with 440 <coughs> watts per kilogram with the efficiency of 34%. So for the current space solar power system, the near-term goal is achieve around 200 watts per kilogram and 33%, we are already better than, than the near-term goal. Uh, more importantly is the, is the 
freedom and ability of our, our design for the specs power and the geometry gain. If we look at the geometry gain above 70x, we, it will compromise the specific power, but it's still above 350 watts per kilogram, but we can achieve a much higher efficiency, around 37%, which is better than the long-term, far-term goal of the current space solar power system. Secondly, the concentration can reduce the cost. So it, it reduces the cost through two mechanisms. So the C space CPU system cost is significantly reduced compared to the CRC system, which is because of the reduced use of the uh, 3 5 materials, which is the blue part in the chart. And also, the concentration can increase the cell efficiency, which can help to reduce the cost more. So, <clears throat> and also with the 32x geometry gain, we can achieve a seven degree, about 7 degree exit angles, which is much higher than the point accuracy of the current space solar, solar, solar tracking system. So there is no, no need for additional tracking. And the lateral dimension of the design is 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter. Thickness is smaller than one millimeter, which, is, which has nearly identical form factor with the existing CICs. So it can be a drop in replacement for the current employee systems. So one of the biggest concerns of the space CPV is reliability and, long, and the lifetime. Uh, for, the, for the previous CPV, space CPVs, commonly they use PDMS as the optical materials. Under the space radiation, it will form a brittle layer of silicon oxide on the surface, which can cause, cause creasing and then reduce the transmittance, uh, spectral transmittance and lower efficiency, so shorter lifetime. But in our design, we use the radiation hard glass as optics materials. And also, we have the same carbon glass protect, uh, protection design as the CICs. And the optical material will provide additional shielding because our cells are face down instead of face up. And we, with the higher specific power design, we, it allows us the freedom to add more shielding materials as required. Our uh, simple sim simulation here shows with 100 micron uh, PDM as adhesive, it's enough for us to provide a 5% degradation at the EOL compared to 10 to 15% degradation for the current system. Every time we try to pitch the idea of the space CPV, people will think, the first response is, oh, think about the Boeing 702 feeder, which is caused by, by the high, much higher out gassing than people thought, due to, mainly due to the high operating uh, temperatures. But based on our previous micro cell CPV study, we found out that even at the 300, 306x contrary ratio, if we, can shrink, if we shrink the cell size to micro scale about 200, 200 micron by 200 micron, the heating will be negligible. And did the thermal cycle test on, the, on our cells and, uh, shows no performance degradation and there's no effect on the bond surface. In our, in our previous micro cell CP study, we already invalidated the manufacturing tolerance. But again, here, we performed the Monte Carlo tolerance analysis on our space uh, design. So even at a very high incident angle, 70 degrees, the optical emphasis spread here is very small. It means our design has high manufacturing tolerance. So here, I summarize all the reasons why our design can be a game changer for the space solar power system. First, we can tune and achieve high efficiency and high specific power. And also it has low cost, high compatibility, and high reliability. Here again, I'm going to emphasize our design micro cell CPV can be a drop-in replacement for multiple deploy systems like the rigid panel or flex panel. That means the market is already there for us. And uh, we have an early discussion with five potential customers. For all of them, show strong interest including one of the largest satellites provided in the, in the US. So they, they are offered to conduct reliability tests for us with no cost or low cost to accelerate the progress. So what's next for us? We're going to perform the radiation and thermal environmental tests in the next six months to one year. And uh, in 2019 to 2020, we're plan planning for the flight test uh, on the CubeSat or balloon to demonstrate the CPV performance on, under the true AM0 uh, environment. And we are seeking a strategic partner who are specialized in space PV. So the market is already big and growing fast. So if we look at the nano cells alone, in 2017, there, there were 300 of them launched. 
and uh, the number will be beyond 600 in 2020. So it's growing very fast. And uh, with the lunch cost falling, so the space power will be less important than the cost. So that's why we have the huge opportunity here because by partnering with a company specializing in space PV, we can deliver a space CPV system which much better performance but at much lower cost. And also it could help to enable entire new mission like the low engineering, low temperature missions and also the SEP on nano satellites. And now we have the opportunity to enter and dominate the space PV market, which can be a huge market. And provided the success of the space PV, we, we can also expand, <coughs> expand the product to medium-sized niche market like the uh, high-power lasers of the auto market. And also have the ability to expand to terrestrial products, which can have a multi-billion dollars market. To conclude, I would like to thank our partners from GWU, AFRIL and NIRL, especially RPIE, who provides the initial funding for our study. Thanks. Thank you. We now have some time for uh, questions. And I believe in the back there are some mics for folks in the back that may want to ask questions. Just one question. You, you talked about high efficiency and high specific power. Can you give a sense of what the baseline technology Performance requirement or performances in terms of efficiency and, and specific power? I believe the current uh, highest efficiency is around 30.7. So you had 32% versus 30.7%, is that right? Uh, I recall this slide. You have one, you went too far, I think. We can achieve 34%. That's the baseline? The baseline? If you go to your summary slide. So what's the current state of the art that you're comparing against? Right, so if you keep going, keep going. This slide, high efficiency at 32, and, and what is the state of the art? 30.7%. Uh, 30.7, 30, 30 and, and lightweight, it's 355 watts per kilogram. What is the state of the art? Uh, I believe it's around like 280 or 270-ish, but yeah. Okay, great, thank, thank you very much. So I missed the, what the solar material is. Are you doing this gallium arsenide, multi-junction, or silicon? It's uh, 35 multi-junction cells. How many junctions? Uh, it, it's a very good question. It, the, how many junctions you use will decide how far you can push it. Currently, we use triple junction and four junctions. So if you use six junction cells, apparently you can get much higher efficiency, but it will add in the complexity to your design and the sales fab fabrication. So that's the balance between your designs. Uh, yeah, so I, I didn't hear a lot about how your product could uh, work in the terrestrial market. I mean, you mostly focused on space. <clears throat> so on the terrestrial market, cost is everything, right? Yep. So you're reducing the number of solar cells, which is gonna reduce cost, but your arrays are a lot more complex to manufacture because of the reflectors, right? So talk about the cost of array manufacturing, which I know is a pretty significant fraction of overall cost. Uh, so right now, based on our, so the study first is uh, sponsored by RPIE, and uh, so the first the design was for the rooftop use, but we, we are able to design our array, but uh, it's mainly, you're right, it's mainly decided by the pro cost of the optics molding pr projection. So based on our small volume estimation, it's kind of two or three times higher than silicon right now. So it's, it's not able to compete with silicon for the utility of residential use right now. But uh, provided with the higher, higher volume production of the optics array of the advance of the technology, it might be able to compete with silicon. But right now it's higher. Do you know how you'd manufacture the uh, convoluted uh, mirror surface? If uh, molding injection. And what, what material would it be? Is it? Uh, you mean for the space? Or, or terrestrial, I, I, both applications, I guess. Uh, terrestrial, we are looking at acrylic, plastics. And uh, for the space, we are looking at the BK7 with a series doped, it's a radiation hard glass. For the mirror? You mean for the 
positive. For, for, for the mirror, the, the, the mirror would be silica, is that what you said, I'm sorry? The, the mirror for surface. The, for the terrestrial use, both the top optics and So for the terrestrial, both of the top optics and bottom mirror will be acrylic for the array. And for the space use, the bottom mirror will be BK7-270. It's a radiation hard glass. Thank you. So your cost, um, you said less than 50% or greater than 50% reduction. Uh, is that based largely on reducing the number of solar cells needed? Is that where you're that cost? Yeah, mainly because of the materials needed for the 35 junctions. Okay. And how large of arrays can you manufacture? Uh, so a pen, small module will be 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter. So 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. Okay, but you can, ma you can ma manufacture this thing in large systems, right? Yeah. And if you go, if the solar intensity were to increase, in other words, you go closer to sun, does your thermal model include um, those temperatures? I, uh, I, didn't rem I don't remember the te temperature range that you had there. So the modeling basically is, is not, a, it was, the modeling here is not absolute temperature value. It's a, it's a temperature difference between the cells and the ambient. So this model is performed actually for the, under the environment on the Earth, including the conduction and the venting environment. And, and so is the specific power benefit likewise because you're, taking, you're shrinking the size of the solar cells and, and the mirror that you add is lighter weight than the solar cells? Is that where the weight benefit comes from? Yes. Okay. Are there any questions from the back? Uh, in the terrestrial adaptation, you wouldn't use 3-5 cells, right? You'd use something uh, less costly. And have it's you considered that in your array design? It's still 3-5 because for the concentrating photovoltaic, you will be it will beneficial to use higher efficiency solar cells. If you go to lower efficiency solar cells, it actually you, it costs more eventually. Yeah. So the, even the terrestrial versions would not use conventional solar cells; they would use advanced. No, but you can add in you can add in silicon solar cell to collect the diffuse light. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thanks.